what's up programmers welcome back so in the previous lecture we had written our first java code to print your hello world on the screen now in this lecture we'll be looking at variables and data types now first of all we'll just go and create a new file so just right click new class and we'll name this as variables okay and just click finish and you should have something like this okay so now let's discuss about variables now variables basically you have used throughout your math math class uh, remember something like this your teacher used to tell you say a x is equal to say 10 and she used to ask you a question say x plus 10 and then you what you used to, used to do you used to substitute that x by 10 and uh, you would add 10 plus 10 and return 20 to your teacher so in java your variables are nothing but a memory location where your data is being stored now the x is nothing but a symbolic representation for the memory location okay so you got your memory where this 10 will be stored and this will be represented by the name x variables of are of multiple types now we look into the data types that a variable can be declared into now basically your data types are divided into two parts that's primitive and non-primitive now the non-primitive part will be taken up later but let's look at the primitive data types now primitive data types can be anything like boolean character integer or floating point number now boolean is nothing but you, when you want to say something is true or false it can either be true or false it cannot be anything other than that okay so that's where boolean comes into place now characters now character is anything from uh, any any key which you type from your keyboard can be a character like from capital a to uh, capital z small a to small z numbers your special characters uh, and all those keys come into your characters okay and then you have integers now integers is ba basically your math integers where you can have numbers now integers are divided into various parts now uh, there are basically four parts that is byte short int and long difference between these data types is nothing but the range now byte is the shortest data type like it it can hold from minus 127 to 128 it it uses one byte of storage now in short you uh, you have uh, you use two bytes of storage in integer you got four and in long you got eight bytes so as the byte goes on increasing you can store a larger number into these data types okay so now next we'll look at floating point number now floating point numbers are nothing but any number where uh, you got the decimal place okay so anything like 1.33 can be a float okay so anything with a point is basically a floating point number okay so there are two types that is float and double now the difference between both of them is uh, that double has a greater precision more precision means that I can have more numbers after the decimal point so let's look into each of the data type in this uh, lecture now let's look at the data types in action so let's start out with boolean variables so to declare a boolean we just write down your boolean all in uh, small letters uh, then you can just give it a name and you can just put a true okay uh, now you can also have a boolean something like boolean b which is equal to false now boolean data types can have only two types of values that is it can either be true or false it cannot have any value other than this okay uh, so basically this boolean tells the compiler that you want to create a variable of type boolean okay so this is the variable this is the name that is given to this variable okay and the value that it contains it it is true okay so basically these line means that create a variable a such that it should be of the type boolean and the value that should be stored inside it is true okay so now let's jump to the next data type that is the character now let's look at character data type now to declare a character uh, data type you use the keyword char okay and just give a variable name and assign it a value now to assign a value to a character you put whatever you want to put into the character into single quotes and you put a character now in this case i'll put q say 
okay so this is how you declare a character variable now inside this single uh, single quotes you can have only a single character okay you cannot write something like this now if you try writing something like this see it gives an error okay so you can have uh, you can only have a single character inside your character variable now let's look at the integer data type that is the byte short int and float now to declare a byte data type you use the keyword byte you uh, give it a name say d and assign it certain value okay so this is how you declare a byte and now uh, one thing about variable that you need to know is uh, variables can change throughout the program so what do i mean by this is say suppose i have something uh, like i have declared d okay now i'm printing it okay so i just wrote system out dot print ln and if i print d okay and now i just i run this program to show you what's the value so right click run as and java application and it will print 10 okay so now say suppose my requirement change and after a certain point i want to change the value of this d so i can do that okay so i can just put as d is equal to 20 and i have changed the value now again if i try to print uh, d it should have the change value right so uh, let's see that So as you can see uh, that first I had initialized the D to your 10 but later I changed it to 20 and so it printed 20 the next time. Okay, so this is a very important uh, thing that your variables can change throughout your code. Okay, so anywhere depending on your requirement say you need to change the value that is stored into the variable then you can do that. You just need to assign it by using this. Now, uh, uh, now I'll just be uh, putting some code now the code I'll be explaining after some time but just hang along uh, I just wanted to show you the limits of the four data type that is byte short int and long so I've just added some code over here now what this code basically does is it gives you the minimum and maximum value that can be stored in each data type now let's quickly run this code and look at what is the minimum and maximum value uh, that can be put so if you look at the output over here uh, you see you have byte short int and long data types which can store data of integer data integers type okay now your byte has a range from minus 128 to 127 so it can have values between this okay so it the range is you can see it's very uh, very small now then you have your short data type which has increased length uh, then you have integer for even greater length and then you have long which is for the longest length okay uh, so you can use the appropriate data type which you require uh, now you might think that uh, I will always go with long because it can store the maximum value right so that's right you can store the maximum value but as you go down this line like from byte till long your performance goes on degrading so uh, so it i always recommend you if you have a application for which you need to improve your performance please look at your data types look at the range that you want the data types to operate in and use the data type appropriately okay so now let's uh, discuss about floating point numbers so before we look into our float uh, floating type of numbers uh, let's look what code i have written okay so basically what i have written here is <coughs> i want to see the minimum value of byte and I want to see the maximum value of byte okay so same thing has been done for your short that short dot min, uh, min value then short dot max value uh, then same for the integer data type and the long data type okay so now let's jump into the floating data type okay so uh, to store a floating type of number you have two data types that is float and double okay so now let's declare a float variable uh, say s which can have a value like 1.33 f now why did i write f now f is to uh, tell the compiler that it is a floating point number now let's declare a double now we'll name it as e which is equal to 1.333 okay now here i have not written f or d here because the compiler by default takes any value to be double okay so if you want to specifically specify uh, that you want it to be float you will put a f otherwise it will take it as double 
okay so now the difference that uh, double has more precision than float now to just prove you my point uh, i'm going to show you that your double has got more precision over float now uh, we'll have this s variable okay uh, what we can do is uh, we'll assign it to say 1.0 divided by 3.0 okay so now if you know that what is 1 divided by 3 right it's uh, nothing but 0.333 recurring okay now just here i need to tell that these two have to be floating point numbers okay so the total has to be a float okay and uh, i'll put e which will be equal to 1.0 divided by 3.0 okay so now what i'll do i'll just print both of these variables so i'll print first s then i'll put a space after there and i'll uh, print e okay so if i run this code now as you can see uh, your floating point number could store only up till certain decimal but you can see the double double has got a greater range over float okay so this also you can use according to your requirement now your float data type is faster than your double but your double offers more precision so use as per the requirement that you need to perform in your code okay i'll be basically using double because i find it convenient and it has more precision now let's look at the naming convention to declare a variable now what i'll do i'll just comment out all this part okay right from uh, the starting point till the end okay so i have put a multi line comment over here we'll just go back to the top and uh, start writing some code again now the naming convention to declaring a variable is such that you can have a variable f having a single length variable to a multiple length variable now single length variable is like you s just use a single character to denote your variable name okay so i can declare a variable with a name say g okay uh, now there's some rules on what the variable can start with okay so a variable can have anything like your small g that small letter you can have a capital letter you can have dollar sign or you can have an underscore okay apart from this you cannot start with with anything okay uh, now if you want to have a multiple length variable then what you can do is you can have uh, say something like say temp okay and you can put some value into it okay so this is what a multiple length variable looks like now for multiple length variable uh, your first character has to be according to the rules but your second character can be anything like numbers okay numbers then you can have a capital letter you can have underscore or you can have dollar okay so these are the only things that are permitted in your variable name okay apart from this nothing is allowed so if you try to do something like this say 1 t something like this okay so look at this this will give you an error okay syntax error okay so you can only start with your small letter or if you want to start with say capital letter you can do that okay so you can also start with your dollar sign and then you can have some say characters and number this is also fine okay or you can uh, start with underscore okay and after that you can have say characters and say numbers okay so these are the only four types of character which are allowed at the starting of a character that is your small letter capital letter a dollar sign or underscore okay numbers are allowed but they can only be after your first character okay so there's only a restriction on your first character then after that you can put it in any order you can also add numbers that's also fine okay so uh, one more thing that before uh, we finish this video now uh, note over here i'll just uh, remove this okay so i have declared a 10 okay now what if i do something like this okay 10 which is equal to say 15 okay now 
Java is a case sensitive language. So what do I mean by that? This 10, okay, and this 10 are two different variables. Okay, so even though their spelling is same, but a single character that is T is in capital case in the upper one and it is in the low, uh, lower case in the uh, lower one. So these two are different variables. Now to prove you my point, let's print it out. So I'll print, uh, print 10, which is small. Then I'll print out your capital with capital 10. Okay, so now if I run this code, you can see that the small 10 printed 15 and the capital 10 printed 10. Okay, so Java is a case sensitive language. So you need always need to remember this many people many times people do make mistake. They have like single character in say capital letter or say small letter and uh, they cannot find the mistake in their code. So please note this down. This is very important thing. And uh, if you have something, uh, if you are getting some undesired result, you can also uh, look for something like this. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Do subscribe to our channel, like our video if you like it. Okay, uh, if you have any comments or if you want to share your thoughts on how this video tutorial should go along or you want some uh, thing special code, say special law, uh, uh, special question that you have which you want us to solve or explain to you, uh, please write down in the comment section below. Uh, we'll be happy to help you out. Thank you.